Hi guys, uh, Dr. Ken Norberg here again. Uh, I'm about to start a long series of YouTube presentations about the whitetail rut. Uh, but before I do that, <laughs> there's a, you know, I keep looking at all the ads and all the magazines, outdoor magazines, and you walk through, you know, a local sports store and you see all the stuff on all the shelves uh, that are new. And uh, a lot of them promise better buck hunting success. I all got pictures of bucks on them. And, and I don't mean to imply those products aren't bad when I say this, but I think if you just, I just have to say, you can't believe everything <laughs> about products that are supposed to eliminate human odors. Uh, I'm not, doing, being as scent free as possible when you're hunting whitetails is good. Uh, if, if you smell strongly of any foreign odor, uh, whitetails will react when they smell you with, with alarm, and it can be quite a bit alarm. I remember years ago I read somewhere that vanilla was a good cover scent. I'll never forget the opening where the deer season they went out into the woods smelling like vanilla in the dark to get to a stand site. And I had deer all around me snorting and running away. I never seen anything so awful in my life. Uh, I, back in those days, we didn't have the products that are available today. Uh, a lot of hunters thought, well, if they stuffed their pockets full of cedar boughs, like my dad used to do, the whitetails wouldn't smell them. I had an uncle who used to stomp and fresh uh, cow pies to try to eliminate human sense. But people have been doing that sort of thing forever. In fact, Native Americans used to cover their bodies with strong smoke smell to eliminate human odor. But everybody's been trying to do that forever. But you know, it's impossible. <laughs> well, let me show you, let me tell you something. Uh, let's start with something simple, your boots. You know, what's on the bottom of your boots? There's rubber soles. All the rubber, all the hunting boots have rubber soles on them nowadays. And Next time you look at one of your boots, pick it up and smell the sole of one of your boots. Strong rubber smell. Wherever you walk in the woods, you're laying down a trail, a, a scent trail, of rubber. And there isn't a deer in the woods that's two and a half years of age or older that doesn't realize that, oh, that's the smell of a human. And nothing, there's nothing you can do to get rid of that odor. It's there all the time. And not only that, but wherever you walk, uh, that scent trail and that smell of that rubber is going to persist for at least four days and maybe longer. Maybe less if it snows or rains in the meantime. But wherever you go in the woods, you're laying down a rubber smell. The same thing with the ATVs and OHVs. Big rubber tires on boy, strong rubber smell on their trails wherever they go. That's human, human smells. You can't get rid of that. And there's others. like. You know, just for an example, if you were to smell a beef steak, you, oh, that's beef, right? You smell pork, that smells like pork, and this is chicken, and that's definitely fish, and this is a grouse, and this is a duck. <laughs> they all have their own peculiar smells, and so do we. We live with our own smells, and so we hardly notice them. Uh, let's say you've got the most expensive hunting clothing you could buy that's supposed to lock in odors, eliminate odors, all these kind of things. After you get home from uh, your next hunting season, uh, put them clothes in a basket for a couple days and, get away, and stay away from them so your nose isn't as adjusted to smelling the odors coming from those clothes. Then go back in there and sniff them. And then you tell me that whitetails can't smell you. You're gonna be lots of human odors on, those clothing, on that clothing. And then the guys that jump on their ATVs to go out to a stand site area, well, they flood their bodies with odors of exhaust fumes and oil, and their clothes are covered with that odor for the rest of the hunting season. And you did all this other stuff to try to eliminate odors, and then you go ahead and do something like that, and you're right back at the beginning. So, but anyway, it's good to eliminate odors, or at least minimize them, so deer won't respond with a great deal of alarm when they smell you. And, you can't stop that. You know, you can go out in the woods and not see a deer all day, but every one of them, if you're a guy that likes to still hunt, every one within a square mile will finally get a whiff of you, and they're all going to recognize your odors 
as the, being those of a human hunter. And they're going to start staying away from me. Every time they smell you, boy, that's not a place where I want to be. And then oh, I was talking to you about the smell of meat. When you breathe, you create a special odor that comes from your body. That's the human odor coming, just like the odor coming from beef or pork or duck or whatever. The human odor is coming from your breath. You can't stop that. you got to breathe when you're deer hunting. There's lots of it. Like gunmetal has a peculiar odor. Next time you're cleaning your gun, or even before, just sniff that metal. That's a special odor. And how do you get rid of that? Uh, there's lots of others, like the odor in your hair. And we all have different odors in our hair. And uh, peculiarly, women have a much nicer odor in their hair than men. Uh, I used to love the smell of my wife's hair. But anyway, part of the reason is that our skin is covered with billions of bacteria. We call them good bacteria. And every day you lose part of your skin and the cells on the surface die. And you sweat, perspire. And perspiration and those dead cells are what all these bacteria that live on your body live on. And those bacteria help prevent you from being invaded by viruses and other bacteria that are bad and funguses and things like that. So they're good to have. But when they, when they consume these products coming off your skin, they produce odors of their own. And they are there all the time. You can take an odor eliminator and spray your skin there, and then it dries, and 10 minutes later, it smells the same. <laughs> you can't get rid of that. Uh, so, what do you do? How, you, actually, even despite all this, you know, uh, you can hunt in a way that the deer that you would like to ta uh, take can't smell you. And it's like my granddaughter used to say, it's simple, I have to do is be downwind. Well, that might sound like a silly answer. How do you know when you're downwind? Well, if you're a knowledgeable and skilled deer hunter, it's fairly easy. Let's say breeding is in progress right now, and uh, which means that uh, the biggest buck in your hunting area, and every square mile has a big one, this big dominant breeding buck, is with does and estrus. And where are the does and estrus? Well, in the morning they're feeding in a feeding area, and in the evening or you know, late afternoon even they're feeding in another feeding area. In the middle of the day, they're in their bedding areas and the big buck is with them in each one of those places. Well, let's say uh, earlier in the year you were scouting in that area and you found a feeding area full of deer tracks. And let's say most of the deer tracks were about three inches long, which is the size of the track of a, of a, of a, uh, a, a mature or adult doe. Well, this is a place where doe is, and here's some littler tracks, two inches. That there's a, do, a little fawn, but it's definitely a doe. Well, one of the places you want to hunt when breeding is going on is where that doe feeds, because one day that doe is going to be estrus, and when it's in the estrus, that big buck of that square mile that you're hunting in is going to be with her. So what do you do? You go, you approach that feeding area from downwind. They can't smell you. You get to a, a stand site downwind. They can't smell you. Well, that's great for morning because whitetails come from downwind and they start feeding about four in the morning, long before you get out of bed probably. But so when you go to the feeding area, they're already there. So you come from downwind, they can't smell you. That's one way to eliminate that problem. Well, in the afternoon, what do you want to do to help reduce the chances that they could hear you coming and see you get to your stand site? Uh, you, you approach from crosswind. You don't want to be sitting downwind in the afternoon and evening because the deer come from downwind. They're checking the area out with their noses to make sure there's nothing dangerous there uh, before they expose themselves in a typically more open area where the foods that they like to eat grow. So anyway, so in the afternoon you want to be crosswind. Well, if you approach that from crosswind, now, now when your scent is drifting downwind, it's spreading out like a triangle going all the way from you. 200 yards downwind, that triangle can be 200 yards wide. That's a huge area where your scent's going. Now, whitetails ignore human scents for the most part that come from a source more than 200 yards away. And you know, they can determine how far away you are just by your scent alone. They have amazing noses. Their noses are actually 10,000 times more sensitive than human noses. 
They can walk up to a trail, you know, no snow on the ground, where a human walked, and immediately they go, oh, a human walked here. There's that rubber smell and whatever else smells are coming off your body. And they can tell which way you went, which direction you went, by differences from track to track, like a bloodhound can do that. Bloodhounds do that. And invariably, I've watched so many deer do this, and they'll snip those tracks, and then they'll look in the direction you went. And that tells me they know which way you went. So anyway, uh, they have very, very sensitive noses. So uh, you don't, when you're sitting crosswind, you don't want your your scent angling out into that feeding area where you expect to see the deer. So what you need to do is kind of angle into the wind. So the, the breeze, the crosswind, you know, it's coming from that way or that way, is blowing toward one cheek, and that way that big triangle area will be over this way. So your scent's not going out there where there's deer are going to be feeding. But if you do that, uh, it, let's say you, you come across some tracks in the woods on the way out to a stand in the morning. Big buck tracks, great big things. Gee, they're four inches long. and Boy, that's that's a dandy. And and it's with a doe. There's doe-sized tracks with it, the two tracks together. And so when you see something like that, you know that doe is in heat. And that doe, it doesn't matter, that, that, uh, being in heat doesn't change its habits. It eats in the morning, between 4 in the morning until about 8, 9 o'clock, or almost 10 o'clock in a lot of areas in the morning, and then it won't start feeding again until about th uh, 3, 4 in the afternoon. So anyway, uh, its habits are going to stay the same. Uh, the buck is with it, and uh, as much as the doe well, might want to breed, she's going to get about t the business of gathering food, uh, chewing up food, and then taking it back to her bedding area and chewing it up as cud to make it more digestible. But anyway, she's going to be out there. And you find tracks like that in the morning, it's holy cow. Uh, that doe is in that feeding area, the one they're heading toward, or you're even heading, right now, and that big buck is with her. I, I, I get so excited when I go out in the morning and I find tracks like that heading toward the place where I was planning to hunt. If I wasn't heading there, I'll go there anyway. I don't have a stand site, but I'm a ground level hunter. I use a stool. I can hunt anywhere using a natural cover as a blind. Uh, that doesn't bother me a bit. Wherever they went to feed, I'm going to be there <laughs> when I find tracks like that. Uh, but again, approach from downwind or crosswind. Well, and if it's crosswind, have this wind blowing toward one or the other cheek so that it isn't blowing out into the area where the whitetails are feeding. So, when you know or you have a pretty good idea where the deer are that you're going to hunt, um, always approach from crosswind, always sit crosswind, never cross the feeding area <laughs> to get to the other side uh, to, to stand hunt. Uh, if you do those things, They'll have no idea you're around as far as their noses are concerned. And, but I'm not telling you not to use any of these other scent eliminators or uh, use them anyway. <laughs> because the less you smell while you're hunting, the more, the more deer are going to stay in your feeding area or in your hunting area throughout the hunting season. So it's worthwhile to be scent free as possible. But don't believe for one minute you're 100% or you're scent free for more than maybe 15 minutes after you put that on there. Or even the stuff that's supposed to keep scents from coming through your clothes. Before you know it, a couple days in deer camp, uh, those clothes are full of human odors. Or so down, hunt from downwind or crosswind only. And, you don't, and that's free. <laughs> and you'll be okay. You'll see a lot more deer, take more, a lot more whitetails, a lot more big bucks. So, good luck to you.